Mondo, le vlog épisode numéro 10 et je suis au grand temple en fait, le, 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 le siège social de la grande loge du Texas. Donc on a fait euh, un 2 heures, pas mal 2 heures, 2 heures et quart de route pour venir ici. On était accueilli, accueilli par un frère qui s'appelle Billy. En fait, Billy a aussi un, un podcast maçonnique qu'on va, qu va mettre à l'écran maintenant. Donc, un podcast maçonnique anglophone. Il nous a accueillis aujourd'hui. C'est le directeur, en fait, du musée de la franc-maçonnerie de la Grande Loge du Texas. Et on a vécu un, un bon deux heures avec lui. Absolument incroyable. On vous emporte avec nous à l'intérieur du temple. Vous allez voir, c'est vraiment intéressant. Let's go! Can, can you tell me the, the history of the Grand Lodge of Texas? Um, sure. So the Grand Lodge of Texas was formed in 1837. Okay. Uh, it was uh, Anson Jones, who statue is, is in the lobby here, okay. uh, was the first Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Texas. Uh, we also here, we it's not located here, but in Brazoria, of Texas, which is down kind of south of Houston, okay. uh, we have a park which has the oak tree where the original brothers came together to meet uh, to petition for a lodge to be formed. Uh, so originally they petitioned Louisiana because they were the closest Grand Lodge. Okay. Uh, Grand Master Holland of Louisiana was a, had issued a dispensation for them to form a lodge. Uh, they quickly, he also issued a dispensation I think to form three others. Okay. Uh, which then came together and, and formed the Grand Lodge in 18, actually I think, Uh, they had requested dispensation, I think, in 1835. Okay. Uh, and then the three lodges came together to, to form the Grand Lodge in 1837. And what about the higher degrees for the Scottish Rite and the York Rite? Was it the same time when they formed it? No, that came later. Oh, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah much later. But uh, originally, so the Texas Grand Lodge, you know how you have ancient free and accepted, yep. you know, free and accepted. Uh, we were originally ancient York Masons. So when you look at the old charters in our oldest lodges, uh, they said AYM on the end of it instead because... Do they keep, the, uh, keep it right now? No, now okay. we're ancient free and accepted. Okay. Oh. Yeah, and I've been trying to pinpoint exactly when that happened. Okay. Uh, because mm -hmm. when you look in the late 1800s, we kind of bounce back and forth between... I, and it seems almost like whoever you're talking to or whether there was an error in the proceedings or whatever, but it bounced back and forth between ancient free and accepted and free and accepted. Uh, and I want to say it was probably around 1900 when they finally settled on we are ancient free and accepted. <laughs> that's it. You know. yeah. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. As with so many things, these things take time. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think there was any standardization. You hear a lot of brethren today saying, mm -hmm. oh, well, You know, the ancient free and accepted started with the ancient Grand Lodge, you know, yeah. the, the ancients from England, yeah. and the free and accepted were the moderns. Yeah. Uh, but there's really no truth to that if you trace it back. It oh, kind of yeah. seems like an issue of preference. Oh, really? Yeah. That's super interesting. Um, so uh, I know that in Quebec, especially even like with the uh, Grand Lodge of Quebec, they, mm -hmm. they, they have. Um, they have the York right, they have the Scottish right, mm -hmm. now they have the French right, and also, uh, well actually everything related with the uh, 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 National Grand Lodge of France, which is also recognized by the uh, United uh, Grand Lodge of uh, England. Right. Um, is it the same reality here? I know you, uh, like the first three degrees you're doing the American right? It, it, it's yes, uh, <laughs> yeah. But do you, are, are you also... The Preston also Webb right, yeah. Yeah, so, but do, are you uh, also doing other rights in the first three degrees? No. No? No, it is just Preston Webb, and that's wow. it, the American right only. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know Scottish right has the first yeah, three degrees. Yeah. My, my lodge has the first three degrees for, uh, for, for the Scottish right. Okay. So, our, so our apron are red and white instead of, of the blue and white. So they have that in Louisiana. 
Wow, uh, really? There is a, a Masonic jurisdiction in New Orleans that still does that in a couple of uh, lodges, uh, Etoile Polaire. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so they they well, so still. So that's a French, a French lodge. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, or formerly French. It, it's imagine, a formerly but. French lodge. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, but they still do that in Louisiana, but not here in Texas. As a matter of fact, here in Texas. Um, it must be done in English. Like there, you oh. can't even do other languages. Okay. Uh, and I've heard some people say, "Well, you know, we'd like to do it in Spanish because of our Spanish heritage." Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, but no, you can't. Oh, Not wow. in Texas. Not at this time, anyway. Okay. You know, unless that gets changed by resolution at some future period. Once again, things take time. They do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, as a matter of it, so our lodge, we've actually talked about going to New Orleans to okay. see those Scottish Rite degrees. Yeah. Um, the closest I've seen is I once went to Manhattan when I worked for uh, Verizon. Okay. Uh, I would go t up there to work in the office. And um, I went to La Union Francaise. Okay. Which is. Uh, Union Francaise, yeah. So the uh, French Union. Yeah. yeah. And they did a French right uh, entered apprentice degree which was fantastic Ooh, nice. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was uh, quite a bit different yeah. uh, but it was you know different in a good way and mm -hmm. I wish I could have understood it but uh, at that point the only thing I really knew how to say was you know my name is uh, mm -hmm. you know, so. <laughs> yeah it, it's interesting I, I, I'm, I'm not sure for how it works here mm -hmm. um, but I think also most of your lodges are always at the third degree right um, no actually so it used to be that way. Huh? Uh, now, most of the time when you go to a lodge, it's usually open in the entered apprentice. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, you know, and there's some, there are some lodges that, you know, it, but it's kind of a local tradition that we okay. always open in the third degree and we call it down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then so, going back up. Right. So in my own lodge, uh, you know, we usually look around. If we have a reason to, we'll open it in a Master Mason's degree. Okay. Uh, district Deputy, when you receive the District Deputy, yeah. it must be a Master Mason's degree. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, when I was Master, a lot of times I would open in a Master's degree, I would call it down, you know, then bring in the EAs, our fellow crafts. Yeah. Um, but most of the time you start in EA. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fantastic. How many members do you, do you have uh, with the Grand Lodge uh, of Texas? So we have about 67,000 right now. Interesting. Right. Yeah. 67, okay. Is it so? It's all across the state, right? Not just in Tessaria, right? Correct. Yeah, all across the state. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. And there was a time when we had over two hundred thousand members. Mm. Oh wow. Yeah. So so okay. So that now it's coming to my other question. Okay. What happened? Oh uh, well. Why masonry? Because uh, I have a theory that I've been speaking uh, at the, uh, the radio show for almost like one or two years. Okay. Um, but I want to see maybe to hear it maybe from from other brothers. Um, what could be the main reason why why Freemasonry is dying? Because we we've been hearing a lot of it like this, uh, right. thousands and thousands of brothers uh, that are leaving the fraternity. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what could be the reason for for here in Texas? Is it the? I think it's the same as it is everywhere. It's just a competition for time, right? Mm. And when it comes down to it, when you go to your lodge meeting, yeah. your lodge meeting has to be more interesting than this. And yeah. if it's not, you're yeah. not going to keep interest. Yeah. Right. I, I think that's the problem. Um, and I see, so I have old grandmasters, uh, Joel P. Lightfoot, right? He was a fantastic orator, and I have some of his original typewritten speeches, and they're like 40 pages long. Mm -hmm. um, and you figure it takes usually about two minutes to read a page, so you're talking about a talk. He, and it's just mm -hmm. an educational yeah. talk about an hour and a half long. Could you imagine having an hour and a half long educational presentation in a lodge today? Yeah. Now, with our current society, I, I think most people just don't have that attention span, mm. you know, mm. to really stay there for that. But back then, you know, when he was giving these presentations in the 40s, that was the norm. It wasn't the exception. Yeah. So I think over time, society has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, there's more things that are competing for our time uh, in our ability to focus for a significant amount of time has become more compressed. Yeah. Interesting. So. On our side... It's interesting. Yeah, Joe Rogan did an interview uh, just a couple shows back with a, a lady who wrote a book on, on uh, our ability to focus and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And, and her, her uh, position was actually that we haven't um, seen a significant decline in our ability to maintain focus on a single thing. It's just become more prevalent to say that it exists okay and that and in a in a sense of a way by doing that we normalize 
the um, that state of so the state of inattention, and so people are less um, less inclined to put the effort in to you know doing that work. Right. You know what I mean, and and building the mm -hmm. kind of that uh, those um, those habits that end up uh, allowing for someone to listen to those things. So I was kind of interested just to, well, for the differing opinion on the thing. You know? Right. No, and I mean, that does make sense in a way. We, we kind of create our own expectations, right? Mm -hmm. So if we do short, little, tiny segments of, of anything, we create that expectation that everything we do should be short, little, tiny seg segments, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, when you think about it, you know, TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. You have these little, tiny videos, and that's become the expectation of, oh, that's entertainment today. Correct. Okay. You know? Yeah. Correct. But that, but that, to, to you know, I, I love using uh, Joe Rogan as an example because you know he's like this madman who's producing three-hour-long podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, and st and everybody's they, everybody says the format shouldn't work, but because of the quality of the discussion, because of the um, real human personal way in which it's presented, I think people have that need, you know. Right. And so I guess uh, my question when you're talking about those talks is. You know, do you find that the way that people are putting together talks for lodges have become maybe a less a less personal, or in time? You know, or, or do you? Right. I guess, yeah. How does how does that uh, how does that relate to what you see? Well, actually, and it, and it could be too, right? Because we we do cater to that, uh, and sometimes it is hard to keep. Uh, so I'm also junior warden for the Texas Auto Research, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, when I put together a paper, I originally start with, you know, over an hour's worth of content, and I'm told, cut it down, cut it down, cut it down, <laughs> you know, because uh, no one wants to hear a talk that long. So it, it, so you go for that sweet spot of about 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, but I think that goes to, you know, we reinforce what that expectation is supposed to be. Rather than cater to what it should be, yeah. we artificially truncate everything. Mm. So, but I hear the same thing actually. So, uh, I think it's like going on a date with a girl. You know, if you're actually interested in going on a date with her, you're going to spend two, three hours in conversation. Yeah. But if you've got no interest in the subject matter, you know what I mean? Then you're going to say, well, just make it really short because I want to go get to something else. You yeah, know? So and you, you're like, oh, look, yeah. I got to go. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I so, had we, this thing. Yeah. we prioritize what brings us value, you know? And well, so. and, and that's a very good point. Actually, that's a fantastic statement. We prioritize what brings us value. So, mm. the question is, are we no longer focusing on what brings us value. Mm. Yeah. And how do we, how do we, you know, I think, how do we listen to the, the members right. so we understand what it is, that, what is they're expecting, what it is they're looking for, you know, we, uh, in listening to a lot of, like, um, kind of some of the, uh, the American podcasts, right, mm -hmm. um, uh, there seems to be a, a significant desire to kind of get, um, touch more on the esoterics to kind of get um, more uh, in uh, to kind of change the way that the papers be more about education uh, than history you know what I mean right and so I'm, I'm wondering if that's what you're seeing here in the state and if, if that's if that's starting to like flow into lodge culture now at this point I I think so because when I give a talk, so again, like I said, I'm I'm junior warden yeah. at the Texas Auto Research. So when I write for that, it's very much history only. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I actually prefer writing about the esoteric, yeah. and it seems to get more interest, you know. So uh, I actually, I have uh, me and some of the other brothers from uh, Fort Worth 148. We have our own podcast, really, uh, and and oh. we do focus on okay, we focus on history, but it seems like the the stuff we get the most uh, interest in is the esoteric. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I think there's a, but I think that's, that's again more of a societal shift that we're looking for something that kind of gives meaning to our lives. I think that's what, kind of what's driving that is we're looking for something more, right? We're looking yeah. for that, for that connectedness because I think overall, you know, generation, over the, the last couple of generations, we've become more disconnected, more isolated. Mm. Uh, so we're looking for ways to re reforge that bond to other people, to mm. the past, right? To, mm. um, you know, spirituality. And I, I think that's what's kind of driving that, that push towards esoteric topics in yeah. history. Mm -hmm. And that's why on our side, like, the main reason why we did the, our design podcast is to try to reach the, the, the young people because they're all mm -hmm. under under 
on their phone. Okay. So so and also try to produce content so they can see it too. So yeah. because at, at one point my impression of Freemasonry was uh, it stayed in one state when we we actually move here. So I just mm. try to bring it slowly so the young uh, can see it. Say hey, you know what? It could be good to work on myself. You know what? I could uh, try to to work on uh, on uh, on how we say the Pierre uh, in English on the on the rock or <laughs> the Ashley. Yeah, the Ashley. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. So, uh, <laughs> and you're you're asking me to translate what I've never actually seen ritual in English. So oh, yeah, <laughs> it's not it's not making my life much easier. But you understand what, 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 what I'm saying. So right. try to work on yourself uh, uh, to become a better person. So, but I I, have, I had the impression is. When I'm speaking to 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 young people in let's say Montreal and Quebec, they don't know what is Freemasonry. They heard about it on YouTube, maybe on one the conspiracy, like a one video saying, "Oh, it's it it's bad" or anything. Our but Dan Brown. Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I watched that, the brand new series, the last symbol. Right. Oh my God, what's happening here? There's an initiation. Why there's a skull there? Right. But they they just know this. So that's why I think, and and, and it's fantastic. You also you're, you're also doing a podcast because I think it gives the opportunity to say, "No, no." Here's mm. real masons, and here's what we do. Yeah, and here's how we became better person. Mm. So, what is the name of your podcast again? It's a Fort Worth 148 podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So, and it's interesting though because uh, we are constantly asked, uh, "Hey, can you know you would probably reach a better audience if you cut it down?" Because our our conversations, we have tried to keep it below an hour, and it's like you can't, it's, uh, <laughs> especially if you're talking to someone who's really interesting. It's yeah. that clock starts starts adding up and before you know it it's like oh it's been three hours yeah. you know we yeah. better end the podcast the same thing with the masonic round table i think uh, mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to do it be uh, below an hour it's impossible yeah so uh, i mean it's super interesting um can, is it possible to visit the maybe the temples that we oh yeah to? absolutely Ce qui en conclut du vlog numéro 10. J'espère que vous avez aimé. Si vous aimez nos vidéos, euh, je vous invite à aller cliquer sur le petit euh, thumbs up euh, qui va apparaître euh, sous l'écran. Et euh, aussi, aussi, si vous voulez aimer notre chaîne, vous pouvez aussi euh, appuyer sur le bouton j'aime pour notre chaîne euh, YouTube. Ça nous aide à avoir des vues, ça nous aide aussi à faire grandir euh, ce beau projet-là qui est l'émission Sous le bandeau. Donc, euh, un grand merci à nos membres Patreon. Donc, vous allez voir les noms du dé <rire> défilé dans, dans quelques instants. Et, euh, et donc, un grand merci à tous nos membres Patreon. Comme d'habitude, on a toujours trop fait un trop il faut faire 3 il faut faire 5 il faut faire 7 Je dis 3, il y en a 4 en réalité parce qu'il y a le très illustre patron à 33 Donc, merci beaucoup à tous nos membres Patreon. C'est grâce à vous si on est capable de, de faire des, des émissions de qualité et que ça nous permet de nous dédier notre temps là-dessus. Donc, on, pour nous, c'est une vraie passion. Un grand merci. Euh, vous pouvez nous voir sur notre page, euh, en fait, notre page web, sous le bandeau.ca, notre page Patreon, patreon.com, barre oblique sous le bandeau, notre page Facebook, facebook.com, barre oblique sous le bandeau et on est sur Twitter on est un peu, un peu partout sur la planète internet on est également sur euh, en fait sur Radio Delta RZ de Web, Balado Québec donc merci beaucoup à tout le monde à nos balado diffuseurs et mon nom est Franco, je vous dis euh, au prochain vlog, d'ailleurs le prochain vlog ça va être intéressant parce que c'est notre voyage à moi et mon frère Mathieu à Las Vegas donc euh, c'est comme je vous disais quand même précédemment ce, ce vlog là va être un vlog euh, qu'on pourrait dire plus touristique là. il n'y aura pas nécessairement de maçonnerie là mais on va quand même donner une certaine couverture là dessus donc euh, à la prochaine ciao